Now that we've added water, uh, we're ready to add an underground entrance. So that is an object. So if you go to the object list, select the underground file uh, directory, and you'll see Grease Natural Cave Entrance 01. So this is actually going to be a tile. So when you place this, it's going to stitch into the terrain. You can rotate that around. All of these features need to snap to grid. Um, so that's an option down at the bottom of this parameters list. So you just make sure that's checked. So that will actually help the game align the underground, which we're about to make, and the entrance piece, which we're placing right now. So now that we've placed our underground entrance, we're going to need to go back into layout mode. And then if you remember, this green grid is what we want to be working with. So push the go to button again. What you need to do is go to the grid tool and select that. And then you'll see the grid appear. So if you select floor under the floor option, and by left clicking, you can just paint down the floor of the underground. And similarly, if you choose wall, you can paint some walls around the gameplay space. If you want to unpaint something, select either no floor or no wall. This is the default tile set. If you want to choose something else, something more appropriate, in this case we want to create a cave, choose the Browse button under System, and you get a variety of different tile sets that you can choose from. So now select the Natural Cave tile set and click OK. If you want to decorate your underground, you can go back to the Object menu. So there's this cave directory with you know, root clusters and stalactites and you place them in the same way that you did in the above ground. So now we have our basic underground, uh, but we need a way to link it to the above ground cave. And that is done in the grid mode. So you select your grid tool again. And it's under features. So what we want to do is place a underground feature entrance. You can rotate features by using the arrow keys. And it looks like I'm going to need to finish this wall right here. Now that we have our entrance piece in the underground, we're going to need to link that to the cave in the above ground. The way we do that is by selecting the portal tool, which is the tool that kind of looks like a door. So what you want to do is you want to select the Browse button, and then go and left-click on the entrance piece itself. And you know you've done this right when you see an ID number show up in that window. So then go back into your layout mode, jump to the above ground piece, and just do the same thing. Select the Browse button, and then click on the entrance piece, and the ID will come up, and then push Link, which is the button right below that. And if you've done it right, you'll see the underground actually appear um, on the other side of the, the cave piece. So now that we have our basic level constructed, we're just going to add some finishing touches. So one of the most important objects that you'll need in the game to actually play the level that you've created is the spawn point. That's located in controls and it's called spawn player. So we're just going to place that at the bridge. It doesn't really matter how you orient it. So when you fire up the game for the first time, this is where the player will appear. We'll probably also want some monsters for the player to encounter, and that's handled through our proxy system. And those proxies are also in the object menu, so if you look, you'll see proxies Greek. And we're just going to place, uh, place some satyrs. And you notice that's just a, a red-looking object. And what will happen is, based on your player level, when you get to this object, it'll spawn monsters appropriate for your level. Now that we have our player spawn and some monsters to fight, uh, we also need to set up impassable area, and that defines where the player can and can't walk. So if you go to the impassable area tool, you paint the areas that players can't walk, uh, just like you would a texture. Uh, if you paint impassable area under a tile, uh, don't worry about that, you'll walk right over it. If you paint an area of impassable area that you, you want to get rid of, uh, just hold the shift button and you unpaint it. Now that we have our impassable area defined in the level, we need to build the pathing data. To do that, go back to your layout mode, and under the Build menu, select Rebuild All Pathing, and that's going to rebuild the pathing in all of the levels. Just click OK. Another thing we can do while we're in here is rebuild the maps, and when that's finished, click OK. 
So the last thing that you want to do is save your game final time. After exiting the editor, we need to go back to the art manager for the final steps of the process. And that includes making a map out of the world file that we created. So in the source tab, if you go under the map folder, you'll find tutorial world. Select that and right click to select auto create asset. Click OK. That's going to create a map fi file for you in the assets tab, which is in the bottom left corner of the screen. So we want to go to the assets menu. Go in the same directory, map, and you'll see tutorial map. Select that and choose build. And that will build all of the game data that you need to play your, your mod uh, in Titan Quest. So now we can play the custom map that we just created in Titan Quest. So in your main menu, just select play custom quest. And you should see your map appear down in this list of custom maps. Select your character and push start. So now you can explore the custom map that you created. And as you can see, that's exactly how easy it is to create a custom map in Titan Quest.